Good morning, Ben. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Very good. Very good. For the Zone Conference in New York City, an event that raises money for cancer research. It's the 29th year of this gathering, and we are so proud as a network to be a part of it. We're covering the markets, obviously, too. The Fed chair speaks in just about 10 minutes' time. Leesman will have those important. Agora conta a minha live. Eu Hey Ben, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Hi, good morning. Good morning, and uh, welcome to everybody. Welcome to our uh, monthly webinar. It's nice to see a lot of people, and we're gonna start uh, in a few minutes. I see some few other people are joining, and we're gonna talk a lot uh, about the market today, about what's going to happen, what the algorithm see for the next months. We're gonna see indices, stocks, a lot of interesting uh, things. And I'm just going to wait a few more minutes for the last ones to join. And we have an interesting webinar waiting for us. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please uh, feel free to ask us uh, by the Q&A uh, that's in the bottom of your screen. Uh, we will try to answer as much as the question as we can. 
Uh, but feel free to ask us whatever, whatever you like. Okay, I see some people that uh, raising their hands. Uh, please do use the Q&A uh, in order to ask question. We are going to as answer as much questions as we can during this webinar. So feel free to write down your questions. The meanwhile, I see still other people joining joining us. Uh, please write us in the in the Q and A. What do you think about the market going up, going down, and what are your thoughts? And uh, we're gonna answer it uh, uh, through to the end of this uh, webinar. So feel free to to write us. Uh, we have like three minutes before we're gonna start because I see still people are joining. But let's let's hear your uh, your opinions. And don't worry, it's anonymous. Nobody can see your uh, your uh, your comments, so feel free. Okay, interesting question so far. By the deep, I see some people saying, "Yeah." Okay, I see also people from, from all around the world here today. Very cool. Well, the, most of the people are positive, I see. Yeah. About the market. All right, we're going to start in, in two more minutes. Um, just a, a quick disclaimer, of course, this webinar is not a provided person, a personal investment or financial advice for you personally or for individuals. Uh, please uh, consult with financial advisor before doing anything that, that you're going to see on this uh, 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 webinar. Um, and please read the disclaimer below um, before we start. Um, you're asking a lot of questions. We're gonna we're gonna answer it, all of them uh, pretty pretty soon in a few minutes actually. Uh, so be patient for one more minute, and we're gonna start. Uh, the market is interesting right now. Um, yeah, very interesting point in the market right now. We have started uh, April. Um, we see new op opportunities that are emerging. We are going to discuss it today. Um, we prepared very interesting webinar. We are going to discuss how we can utilize artificial intelligence in the financial market, specifically in the stock market, to identify opportunities on a daily basis. We are going to see uh, what are the most interesting opportunities today, what are the best stock picks today, what are the leading sectors for the coming months. Um, uh, we are going to talk about uh, regions uh, around the globe that, uh, that are emerging right now and which regions we should avoid. So it's going to be a very, very interesting webinar. Um, I see some interesting questions about artificial intelligence, about uh, how it's possible to use artificial intelligence in order to identify opportunities. We are going to discuss it today. Uh, 
and we're going to talk about the S&P, about the Russell, about all the leading indices. Just be patient. And, and yeah, well, I think we can, we can actually start. Okay. So, yeah, please go ahead, make the introduction, and, uh, we, and we are starting. All right. And so, hello to everyone again. And we're starting our monthly webinar going, talking about the market and indices. That's the, in, from the next uh, month and the next few days as well. We're going to see interesting examples from the from the last month and actually from our last webinar. Um, and uh, let me introduce to you Yohan Goliger, is uh, the CEO and co-founder of Ino First. And I think uh, we are ready to start. Yohan, you're on the stage. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um, it's good to see so many people here today, this morning with us. Uh, so I will start with a quick introduction about uh, about I know first, uh, what uh, uh, about the team, about the technology, about uh, our clients, um, and. Uh, um, of course, uh, we are going to to map to map together several opportunities today, um, and uh, let's start with a quick uh, overview of I know first. I know first, we are AI a fintech company. Our main solution is a predictive algorithm that uh, generates daily prediction for the financial markets and identifies the most promising investment opportunities. We are combining different AI approaches into one uh, AI algorithm. We are utilizing uh, machine learning, deep learning, genetic algorithms. Um, our predictive algorithm is generating daily forecast for over 13,500 assets from different asset classes. Uh, equities, ETFs, indices, commodities, currencies, cryptocurrencies, interest rates, uh, with daily forecast for multiple time frames, short term, mid term, and also long term. Uh, this is a global solution. We are covering over 50 global stock exchanges around the globe, including the stock exchanges in the US, which are our main focus, but also additional stock exchanges such as uh, Canada, Europe, uh, and basically most of the stock exchanges around the globe. Uh, as you can see it here in this uh, partial uh, list. Um, the algorithm was developed uh, by, a, by a team, by a very strong AI team. Uh, we, had, uh, we, have, we are having PhDs, AI and machine learning experts in our R&D team. Dr. Lipa Reutemann from the Weizmann Institute of Science is leading our R&D team. Uh, besides him, we have uh, employees with the background of uh, math, um, computer science, uh, data science, um, statistics, physics, uh, Ben Rubin, that, uh, that is uh, leading today's webinar, is uh, the head of our advisory team. Uh, ben used to work for the leading uh, um, bank in Israel as a, as a financial advisor. Um, uh, and he is also part of uh, uh, um, the team that actually working with hedge funds, family offices, uh, banks from all over the, around the world, uh, and basically guiding them how to utilize the predictive algorithm in their uh, ongoing investment process. Um, I'm, I'm uh, this, the co-founder and the CEO of I know First. I'm also serving as the chairman of the uh, Israeli Export Institute uh, FinTech board. I'm lecturing um, for FinTech in the Reichman University. Uh, my background, um, I used to work for one of the leading consulting firm uh, here in Israel. Um, I'm an engineer with the M MBA uh, with extensive uh, experience in the field of uh, uh, forecasting uh, systems for different purposes. Um, 
uh, the solution that you are about to see today, uh, the Ino first AI algorithm is being trusted basically by uh, the world's leading hedge funds, investment houses from all around the globe. We, as you can see here in this part here list, we are working with edge, with leading hedge funds, leading investment houses, banks, family offices, and also brokerage firms from all over, over the world that utilizing this predictive algorithm in order to identify opportunities in the financial markets. We are also working with uh, a retail uh, uh, traders, investors, high net worth individuals that utilizing this predictive algorithm uh, in order to identify opportunities, to generate trading ideas, and also to monitor their own portfolio. And we are going to talk about uh, the different use cases today. Um, the solution that you're about to see has received, has received several international awards from uh, different entities from UBS um, uh, to Entity Data in Japan. We have received a recent uh, award from the Geneva Wealth Tech Forum as the best international uh, wealth tech solution. Um, there are additional uh, awards that this predictive algorithm received during the last year. Uh, you can find all the information in, in our website. Um, we are uh, actually um, lecturing for the second year already in Reichman University. We are delivering FinTech course. You can see Bent on the right side is part of the, uh, of the team, of the lecturing team. Uh, the I know first predictive algorithm has been covered in the global uh, media. You can find it in our website as well. There are very interesting uh, reports about uh, this predictive algorithm. I had the honor also to meet with uh, NVIDIA CEO uh, in the previous time that he has been in Israel. Um, and actually, I know first is a live example of how you can utilize um, or integrate artificial in in intelligence into the capital market in order um, basically to identify opportunities on a daily basis. Um, you can find in the website also uh, client reviews. Um, we very, very proud of uh, the positive reviews that this predictive algorithm uh, has received from different, uh, different entities and also different clients. So um, what do we do basically? So by using the predictive algorithm, it's possible basically uh, to utilize the daily predictions that we are sending to each client um, in order to identify opportunities in the market, to, to receive information regarding the direction of the leading indices and to uh, generate trading ideas. So this is the first use case, to utilize the, the daily forecast that you're going to see today uh, in order to build your portfolio. We are also um, building a different AI-powered investment products that uh, rely on our predictive algorithm. Um, we actually develop several systematic trading strategies that actually building, constructing the portfolio for you and conducting also the rebalancing, the ongoing rebalancing in your portfolio. Uh, during the last month, we have released the first AI-powered mutual fund in Israel, in a partnership with uh, a leading, uh, with the actually the leading investment house um, here in Israel. That after two years um, of uh, uh, like very extensive uh, process, that they were basically checking the predictive algorithm, they decided to build a product based on that, and it's available right now. To the Israeli uh, clients. Um, the algorithm includes three components. In the third component, in the first component, it's possible to use the I know first predictive algorithm in order to identify opportunities in the market, to identify the most promising investment opportunities. We are going to see during this webinar some opportunities that the algorithm identified today. Um, it's possible uh, to use the predictive algorithm in order to receive stock market intelligence, 
in order to identify leading sectors, to identify sectors that we should avoid. Um, it's possible to receive uh, predictions regarding the main indices, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the Russell 1000, the Russell 2000, um, basically on a daily basis. It's possible to identify promising regions from all around the globe. And uh, it's also possible to receive information regarding the volatility or the expected volatility in the market and the direction of the interest rates. Uh, the third component include daily forecast for each client uh, portfolio. So basically, if you have already uh, a portfolio, you can send this portfolio uh, uh, to us and the predictive algorithm will generate a customized forecast for your own portfolio. And by combining all those three elements, it's possible to create the ongoing uh, optimization of uh, basically of your portfolio by combining the opportunities uh, with the customized forecast and also with the stock market intelligence. Uh, so how we do it? Uh, every day, the predictive algorithm is collecting a huge, basically huge amount of data that coming from the entire financial market. We are collecting data that coming from the interest rates environment. We are collecting data from the equity market. We are collecting data from the currency, commodities market. Um, and basically, by utilizing our technology, the algorithm is adding the new data and combining it with the historical data. And on a daily basis, the algorithm is building the complex network that exists in the financial market. In the financial market, it's, which is very complex uh, environment, there are thousands of connections between the different assets. And by using our technology, the algorithm is building this complex network on a daily basis without any human intervention. Uh, before each trading day, the predictive algorithm is generating the most updated forecast for the different time frames, for the short term, for the mid term, and also for the long term. Um, as a self-learning algorithm, there is also a feedback loop. The algorithm is also learning from each forecast, from each successful forecast, um, and, uh, and also from the other forecast. And this is another insight that the algorithm is, is utilizing uh, on a daily basis, or another data that the algorithm is utilizing on a daily basis and combining those information in the next prediction that is generating. In terms of the technology, we are combining different AI approaches into one mach a machine learning algorithm. We are utilizing deep learning, artificial neural networks, genetic algorithms. And the most interesting thing about this predictive algorithm is the ability to separate uh, and basically to focus on the most predictable assets every day. I will give a simple example. In the, um, if we are taking the S&P 500 index, among the 500 stocks that, uh, that are in this index, there are stocks that are predictable and there are stocks that are not predictable. The algorithm on a daily basis is able, is able to focus, to separate the unpredictable part and to focus on the most predictable assets. Again, we're going to see some live examples today uh, of uh, very interesting stocks that, are, that uh, the algorithm identified basically today. Uh, ben, yes. Uh, tell us, tell us what do we see here? Yeah, I'm going to tell you about a little bit about uh, how to read the forecast and uh, how to use uh, the two indicators that we have in the forecast uh, to choose the best uh, assets uh, or stocks. Um, so the as the the forecast come in the shape of a heat map. Uh, the long, the green cells represent a long uh, position, while the red one represent short position. Um, we can see the time frame of the forecast in the top of the forecast. For for this example, is for three months. Uh, as everyone said, we have uh, six time frames uh, in each and every package that you get. Um, and we are using two main indicators. Uh, one of them is the signal which we can see in the middle of the square. Uh, the signal is the predicted movement of the asset. Um, um, it's actually uh, help us to rank all the assets uh, in the forecast 
the best uh, asset will, will be found in the top left corner. We can see, for example, uh, if we're checking the one month uh, example, we can see XOMA. It has the stronger, uh, the strongest uh, signal, uh, which means that the algorithm gives this specific stock the best predictive uh, uh, movement or the best uh, uh, price deviation, we can call it, um, from all the other stock that are in the forecast. Um, the one in the bottom right uh, has the lowest signal, uh, and that means that the algorithm gives the specific asset the stronger move it uh, downwards uh, in from this specific uh, forecast. The other signal that we are using is the predictability filter. We can find it on the uh, bottom left of each and every square. And this actually tells us how good the, the algorithm can read or can predict the specific forecast. Uh, it's a Pearson correlation uh, measurement. It moves from minus one to one, uh, while zero represents us uh, around 50% probability that the asset will move to the predicted uh, movement. And so those two signals, two, two indicators, the signal and the, and the predictability filters are helping us to focus on the best stock in each and every time frame. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few examples um, in a few slides ahead to how to use those indicators uh, in a smart way and uh, how to use the predictability and the, the importance of this uh, specific indicator, the predictability filter. We're gonna see examples and we're gonna uh, go uh, through it. Um, just to give you a quick look how the forecast uh, looks, um, after uh, signing into the service, you will get a six time frame forecast. We can see that three days, seven days, 14 days, one month, three months, and one year. And in each and every time frame, we have the best stocks to buy. Uh, which are in, of course, as said, the the green cells. And we have the, the red cells that tells us uh, a short position or a sell position for those specific stocks. Um, so this is an example for a top 20, uh, the top 20 package. In this specific package, we also have a, another uh, special indicator for the market itself, for the S&P 500. We can find it uh, right in the middle here. Uh, so all the top packages, have uh, additionally to the stocks that we have there, the, the prediction about the S&P 500 index. Um, another quick uh, technical note, if you wanna switch between the timeframes from the, the three days, seven days and 14 days to the longer timeframes of one month, three months and one year, you can do it by clicking on the signs in the bottom uh, of each and every forecast from the three, seven, 14 to one, three and 12 months. Um, okay, so let's check some a uh, few examples from uh, the latest days. Uh, just uh, I'll, I'll just give a, a small explanation about what we are seeing. Uh, those are the ten stocks that the algorithm gave us. Uh, it actually generated this specific uh, forecast on uh, March 26, as we can see here. And this forecast is for three days. So the algorithm picks the best ten stocks to hold on those three days, actually to buy for those three days. And um, we can find uh, indicators, as I said earlier, the signal, which is in the bottom of the, in the middle of each and every square, and the predictability that is in the bottom uh, left. And we can find the stock's uh, performance to the right. We can see, for example, NKLA in this specific, in three days, moved the third, almost 40% up. Um, we can see the uh, General Motors here, we can find Ford and other stock Tesla that moved in that three days. Uh, in the bottom, we can find the I know first average, the average uh, the, the average performance of all those 10 stocks. And of course, comparing it to the S&P 500 to the benchmark uh, and its performance in those three days. So um, if we were, you would open your forecast on the 26th of March and uh, looking for a short time frames or short time investment, uh, in the three days, you wouldn't find uh, uh, those uh, stocks. We can find the NKLA has the highest signal here. You can see it's 0 0.86, and, and it's much higher than the others. And it's Again, I'll, a quick explanation about the signal. It's not telling you what's, what the price you should enter. It's not giving you the percentage of the asset that will move. The, the signal is an internal index. Uh, we use it to rank the, all the assets 
uh, from the one that's supposed to move as, as higher as they can, and the one that those are supposed to go down. So this three days in NKLA, we can find a really high signal here that we can see the, also the performance of that stock that moves according to this uh, signal. And if we are moving to the seven days, uh, again, uh, forecast that was made on the generated on the 21 in March uh, 2024, we can find uh, stocks as FCX that actually uh, related to metals and mining. Um, you can find again the GM, MHK, um, uh, TXT, MGM. We have a diversity of, of stocks from different investment universes, and we can see the returns of this specific uh, forecast in three day in seven days was three percent, while the S and P did uh, 0 0.75, 57. Again, as we go higher or longer from the time frames for uh, three days, for seven days, and 14 days, as we can see here, you can see that the signals are getting stronger and the predictability also getting higher. So. This is an important note. Uh, um, the longer the time frame, uh, the better the predictability and the signal of the asset that you will see in the forecast. So uh, keep your focus on the longer time frames. And I'll go show you a few examples for what I mean uh, uh, later on. Uh, right now, we are we are seeing uh, the 14 days forecast, again, that generated on uh, March 12th. And uh, we can find the MSTR that uh, jumped uh, 26% in these two weeks. Uh, we can find the GPS gap uh, and the uh, other uh, stocks uh, from uh, the US market. Uh, we have some um, mistakes that we can find here as well. Uh, in this specific forecast, the algorithm was right nine out of 10 stocks. Uh, so it's not 100%. It's not working all the times. We have some a uh, uh, few uh, uh, errors, but in this case, uh, the the algorithm actually outperformed the market uh, almost by six percent. Uh, in the one month uh, forecast, again, we can find uh, um, a lot of stocks from uh, the tech uh, sector or from the semiconductors, and we can see uh, the that the average was significantly higher than the S and P five hundred. Uh, like 22% if we compare to the 2.2% in one month. Um, this is extraordinary performance that the algorithm gave us uh, in the last uh, month and focusing on uh, semiconductor stocks and technology stocks. And we also have the same thing for three months. If we generated, if you're holding this, this forecast for the, those stocks from the 26th of September before the beginning of the 2024, you can find the best stocks that the algorithm gave uh, for different time frames, uh, this one is the three month, and again the the returns are higher um, as well uh, as the risk in this specific package. Um, and even in one year, one year ago, if we were holding the stocks for a one year, those was the results uh, uh, for those specific stocks. We can say some stocks from the home builders universe, uh, such as MHO, HOV, and the uh, and the others that also gave a really high return in this one year of a, a forecast. We can find here the signals and the predictabilities, the predictability indicator are much higher. Uh, check the signals uh, that we can find here in the predictability of 0 0.84, uh, which means a really high predictability level. Uh, we're always looking for the highest predictability level. Uh, it's really important to focus on the assets that the algorithm uh, can predict and knows how to predict well, as Yaron said, uh, while is uh, separating the, the assets that he can uh, knows and knows how to predict from those that he can't. So uh, these numbers actually represent how good the algorithm can predict the assets. So always look for the highest number uh, and also look for a high signal. Yes, just to just to add before we going uh, before we continuing, um, every day the forecast that you see here is being actually being sent on a daily basis before the market opening. Now, as Ben suggested, the longer in the longer time frames the confidence level is higher. Therefore, we are suggesting when you're opening the daily forecast, start all with, with, the, with the long time frame, with the longer time frame, with the one month forecast, with the three month forecast. We are going to do several exercises today uh, to illustrate it. 
Um, and another very important point, use the, um, the, uh, the daily indication, not only for the stocks to buy or the stocks to short or to avoid, but also utilize the daily S&P 500 forecast that, that appearing at the middle of the heat map. Um, you can find it in the middle of the heat map. And it's a very good indication regarding the market direction. If the market is predicted to be positive, focus on the stocks to buy. However, if the market is predicted to be negative, um, I would uh, suggest to focus on the, show, on the stocks to short sell or to avoid any long position. So it's very important to utilize it, uh, to utilize all the indicators that the algorithm is providing to you on a daily basis. The predictability first, definitely it's mo the most important indicator. The signal, the daily S&P 500, a uh, forecast, try to uh, utilize the predictions, the stock picks that the algorithm is identifying, but also try to build, uh, to get information and insights also from the stocks to avoid, try to uh, um, uh, match each prediction to each, uh, to each sector. And here, uh, we can see another uh, very important use case, how to use the, the predictive algorithm. As we know, sometimes in the market, there are some situations that actually you should avoid the market or you should be more careful. Um, 2023, for instance, was a very good year for, the, for, the, for stocks, for equities. However, even in this year, there were a period in the market that we should actually maybe be more careful. And on the left side, we can see a live example of actual forecast that was sent to our clients for, uh, from March last year. We can see in this forecast, um, first, the prediction of the S&P 500. We can see that the predictive algorithm, the I know first predictive algorithm had a negative prediction for the S&P 500. So it's the first indication and very important indication. The second one, we can see that the strongest signals came from the negative side. And among those assets, we can find uh, different stocks, different equities, and actually that coming also from the financial market. We can see here, of course, Silicon Valley Bank. We can see here FRC um, and if you remember during this period, uh, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed and uh, we can see that um, our clients that have received this prediction had received very good indication regarding this, uh, this crisis, basically. On the right side, we can see an example from the end of February 2020, while the market, if you remember, if you recall during this period, we started to hear some news that coming from China regarding a um, mysterious uh, virus, uh, but we didn't see the effect on the market. Uh, at the end of February, around 25, 24 of February, we started to receive very negative indication regarding the S&P 500 and also regarding some leading stocks. And we can see the, um, the sharp movement that the S&P had during this period. And from time to time, uh, we are receiving those negative signals. So it's very important to use uh, the insights and the predictions that the algorithm is providing for the long side, but also for the short side and not to ignore it. It's very important to build um, you know the story behind the market right now by using the, this AI predictive algorithm. Here we can see an example how we could actually see indication to the crisis in, in the banking sector that we had last year already on February. We can see here on the right side a prediction from 19th of February 2023 among the 10 stocks to avoid we can find Silicon Valley Bank, we can find Signature Bank that has collapsed basically later on. So I do suggest to, to follow and to monitor both 
the stocks that uh, the stock opportunities that the algorithm is identifying, but also the stocks to short. Um, and even this year, it's 2024 so far is a very positive year. However, on the beginning of 2024, we have received negative indication regarding some, this is the ETF prediction, by the way. So in the ETF prediction, we have received some really negative indication regarding China. We can see here the ETF that representing China, FXI, and also GXC. Both of them um, actually went down at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of 2024. Right now, the picture is different. This is just an example. And, and we saw the gap between the Chinese market, the market in Hong Kong, and the S&P 500. So always try to follow also the predictions that appear on the bottom. Another example is uh, from the ETF uh, package is uh, uh, actually the prediction that the predictive algorithm had for 10, the clean energy ETF. We can see that on the beginning of uh, 2024, the algorithm had a negative prediction for 10. Um, and actually during uh, 2024, this ETF is underperforming the market significantly so far. Um, and again, it's a very good example to illustrate how the algorithm can provide you insights that usually you are not receiving um, from any other um, tools, basically. Yeah, and that's not, not just uh, insight. We have uh, the, the timing that the algorithm gives the forecast is uh, also uh, really important. Uh, I saw some question, uh, when we're supposed to buy and which price? Uh, you should buy at the opening of the same day you get the forecast, if you get the forecast today. So uh, try to buy the, the assets at the opening or as much as, can, as you can to the close uh, previous uh, uh, price, uh, yesterday uh, closing price. Uh, that's supposed to be your goal. And here we can see a few examples of the algorithm timing as well. Uh, uh, MSTR, uh, the, I think it's the largest company largest company in, in the world that's holding the, the crypto uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we can see the timing of this specific uh, forecast, uh, 22 in February uh, 2024. Uh, we got a really uh, strong uh, signal for MSTR, it was around this, this point. We also see that the stock went down a little bit, uh, even more. And then uh, the one month forecast, if we if we'll, you see made like a significant uh, return of almost uh, more than 120%. Uh, by the way, in this date, uh, we had our last webinar and, and we show you that they act a live forecast uh, to uh, of the of MSTR and saw that the algorithm gave her a really uh, strong, long uh, position. And even from the last webinar, we can see the performance was pretty impressive. Um, some other uh, uh, timing that the algorithm gave, GPS stock as well, the gap was uh, uh, in uh, March 10, uh, this, uh, in the last month. And also the, the stock went down even a little bit after the forecast. Uh, was given and then we can see uh, the big jump that we had in those uh, 14 days um, the same example for uh, Amat the semiconductor stock uh, we can see where the algorithm gave uh, the first uh, uh, prediction it was on 27 of November we can see the stock went down and up uh, for a few days uh, after the, the, the forecast but uh, in the three months a time frame we can see the the uh, almost uh, 40 percent that the that the, this stock has made uh, from uh, from the 27th of uh, November and of course uh, our famous Nvidia uh, also uh, was uh, the in the top of the forecast uh, in last year actually in the beginning of 2023 and we can see the algorithm really liked the this uh, the specific uh, stock and gave her the biggest signal above all the signals that we can find here and uh, I think most of us know what she made in 2023 and also in the almost in the end of 2024 we had another uh, great uh, forecast 
on NVIDIA and uh, she kept on rising even in the beginning of 2024. Uh, so I gave you a few examples of today's forecast. I mean, some of our clients get uh, today, today's forecast. Uh, this forecast specifically is from the top 20 package. Uh, I took a screenshot from the three days and from the one month uh, and took the actually performance from uh, the opening of the of those stocks. And we can find there uh, in the three days, SNX, uh, IESC, Boot, FCX, NP, and we can see the return of them and also in the one month. And uh, this is actually today's forecast, okay? So uh, we can actually see it live, uh, what those stocks are doing right now, MSTR, also uh, was a, a, a strong recommendation for the one month uh, period. Um, and yeah, MSTR is already jumping by 6.5% as we speak. Uh, yeah, same yeah. goes with Micron Technologies also um, jumping by 3.5 right now. That is even more when I took, uh, when we start uh, the, started the webinar. Um, yeah. And Again, from the last webinar, if you, uh, if some of you were with us in the last webinar, we gave this recommendation from the same package. In top 20, we gave the best stocks for long and the best stock to short. Uh, MSTR did the 25% uh, in this specific month. And uh, we can see CNXC, which was in the bottom of the forecast with a negative signal and uh, made minus 15% uh, in this specific month. So. Uh, uh, it's worth being in our webinars and listening to the what the algorithm uh, uh, suggesting us uh, once in a while. Uh, we're gonna see actually in the end of this webinar what the algorithm think about the market, about the world indices, about the specific uh, stocks. So uh, uh, stay tuned. And I'm gonna I, I wanna go through with you so how to, how exactly you should uh, pick the stocks and focus on specific sectors from the forecast that we have. As Jaron said at the beginning, the algorithm gives us a lot of information. Um, um, it's actually give us, it's like a global uh, uh, financial intelligence uh, unit that gives us a lot of information about the markets. Um, we can find here, for example, uh, the three months forecast that was generated on the beginning of 2024. Uh, this is actually up until uh, this uh, specific month. Uh, we can find that the algorithm put in the head of the table uh, a few uh, main indices or sectors. Uh, we can find the socks here, the semiconductors, as we can find it here. You can see it here. We can find the housing sector, AGX, and we can find uh, uh, the Indian market, financial market, actually, and the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100. So how do I actually choose my stock? First, I'm checking a, a gener in general a look uh, where the markets are going, and I can do it by the few packages that we have. The ETF package, for example, gives us the best sector to be in for all the time frames, or the indices uh, a forecast, a forecast that we see right now that's giving us the best uh, uh, world indices and uh, sectors uh, that we should focus on. So uh, in this specific in the beginning of the year, I, I thought that the semiconductor uh, sector is going to be one of the leading sectors uh, uh, from uh, this forecast. So uh, besides the semiconductor, of course, the housing sector, as we can find here. Uh, so I'm going and actually looking in the semiconductors uh, uh, package, uh, the SOX package, uh, and checking the stocks that I, uh, that I can see there. Uh, I'm starting uh, at, at the longest time frame. The longer time frames have the highest predictability and has the highest signal. As I said before, is the those are the time frame that you should focus on. Uh, I particularly particularly like the three months uh, time frame. And after choosing or looking at this specific time frame, I'm looking at which stocks have the highest predictability level. For example, here I can find LRCX. I can find AZTA, I can find ENTG and LSCC that have the highest signal and the higher highest predictability level. And then I'm checking if I can see them in other time frames. For example, the one month and the one year. It's it's better to choose a stock that is appearing in multiple time frames 
the the more time frames it's appear it's better for you to to focus on on that specific stock and um, so we can find again even if by the way even if you're buying for a shorter time frame for like a week or two weeks start with the longer time frames because there you can have the high predictability level that you can see here and then go down to the uh, shorter time frames and pick the stock that you want uh, from there but if your if your stocks is appearing also in the longer time frame in and in the shorter time frame shortest time frame it's better for you so in this specific example we can find lcx um, um amat entg lcc that are in all of those time frames and have high predictability level and high signal and we can see the results uh, for for those stocks from the beginning of the year for three months uh, which is pretty amazing if we're just looking at this specific year, 2024. Uh, same goes with the home builder sector, which I saw uh, AGX in the indices that was in the top of the table. It looks like a promising sector. Again, I'm going to the three months uh, timeframes and, and check the stocks that I see there. I check for the highest predictability one. I can find WSM, which is amazing here so far. I can see it in multiple time frames, also in the one month, also in the one year. So I mark this specific stock. The yellow marks, by the way, are made by me. It's not coming with the forecast, but yeah. I, I just uh, uh, bolded the one that are that uh, I want to focus on that has a high predictability level or high signal. Again, signal is also a, a good indicator for me to choose the stock. A uh, BLD, for example, uh, the 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 predictability is not that high as the other, but it's compensated with the with the highest signal. And also in the one year, we can find the difference between the first place and the second place in the signal. So that's why I marked BLD, and we can find the return to the right. WSM, IABP, BLD look really good this year from the beginning of the year. Uh, AMA Joe, um, uh, not so much, but again, not everything is going uh, clear and ever, not we don't, don't have only successful uh, stocks. Uh, we have some mistakes, but again, uh, the other three went uh, with high, really high returns from the beginning of the year. And uh, that's something that you should, this is how you should use uh, the forecast and focusing on the longer uh, time frames. So basically, just to add to what you are saying, we are creating our own sector rotation strategy. We are first using the word indices package in order to identify leading sectors. Then we are deciding which sector we would like to focus on. In the, in the example that Ben shared, we decided to focus on the semiconductors because we saw a very promising signal for the SOX. We saw very promising signal for AGX, the home builders sector. Therefore, it was a very good strategy to focus and to drill down into the home builders sectors. And this is exactly what, what you did in this uh, live example. All the examples that you see in this webinar are, various, are based on predictions that our client uh, received and receiving. The focus from today, this is the actual focus that our top 10, top 20 clients uh, received today. Um, so, and then you're focusing uh, on the leading sector, on the leading uh, stocks, the most predictable stocks from each sector. And by the end of this webinar, we are going to offer you a very convenient way to combine those two packages on a daily basis. Uh, so stay tuned, as Ben said. That's exactly combining the ETF package or the indices package that we know which this which sector is going to lead this month, this week, this three month, and then focus on the stock from the from the uh, stocks package that we're going to offer you in this end of this webinar. Um, again, uh, as as I mentioned, the ETF uh, package. This is example for the the ETF forecast. Uh, for one month, uh, the, the, actually the algorithm chooses the best sectors uh, from the U.S. markets uh, for different time frames. You can find here the one month time frame, and we can find to the right the one year. Uh, if some of you like to invest for a longer time frame than month or three months, we can also find the one year, and you can see that actually 
the home builders was was actually uh, mentioned or focused on by the algorithm in the end of March 2023 and made a really good return in this specific year. We can also find for we can also find here like a leverage uh, ETF such as the TQQQ and FAS uh, to the one that wants uh, some more risk in their ETF. Uh, you can find it here as well. Of course, this goes long and short. We, uh, additionally, to this 10 uh, long ETF, we also provide a short uh, ETF that we should you should short or you should sell or you should avoid uh, those specific sector. I really recommend this package. This package, I think, is uh, is uh, giving you a, a general idea of what's happening in the market and and. Uh, um, it, it's a diverse and and I've offered you um, a, some different investment universe that you can focus on. So uh, this is one of my uh, recommendation. All right. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of the how we use our uh, predictive algorithm to actually generate a, a strategies to our in, uh, institutional clients and. By, I, I will start by how do we look at the market or how actually institutional clients look at the market. Uh, they divide it to two levels. Uh, level one, as we can see here to the left, is holding the 11 main sectors from the S&P 500. Uh, I mean by that, like the energy sector, uh, the technology sector, XLK, uh, or the energy, uh, XLE, that we all, uh, yeah, well, most of us know. So they divide all the stocks to 11 main sectors. And to the right, we can find the level two. The level two is like the, the those sectors industries or 24 industries that we have in, in the S&P 500 universe. For example, the semiconductor XSD, this ETF is actually related to the XLK main sector. It's belong to the XLK, the main sector. So. Uh, our strategies, one of those strategies can focus on the level one uh, sectors or the level two industries, as we're going to uh, see in a minute. Um, before that, uh, all the strategies that you're going to see here are uh, actually monthly rebalanced. Once a month, the algorithm picks the best stock or the best asset to hold for this entire month. And it's all being compared to the S&P 500, of course, as a benchmark. Uh, we can see here the, the returns of the S&P 500 from uh, uh, the last uh, 30 years. And we always, uh, the, the institutional clients always compared us to the S&P 500, of course, as a benchmark, because if I did like a 30% a year, uh, but the S&P did 40%, so it's not much of a success. You always been compared to the benchmark, of course, and you have to beat uh, uh, the benchmark. That's the main target of our strategies. And just to see from the what the S&P 500 actually universe is, uh, is components, we can find that the tech sector is almost 30% uh, of the S&P. We can find a lot of healthcare and financial uh, services also in the great parts of this uh, S&P 500 is an interesting fact. Um, and I, I want to go quickly through our strategies and explain you how exactly it works and uh, uh, see some different kind of strategies. For example, uh, we have high performance strategy. In this specific strategy, uh, again, we can see uh, the three years performance from 2020 up until 2024. Uh, we can see the return of each and every strategy and compare it to the benchmark. And we have different targets for each and every strategy. For example, the high performance is the uh, targeting high performance uh, uh, returns. Uh, the low risk strategy is actually uh, uh, targeting uh, low drawdowns or low volatility uh, throughout the, the years. Um, we have some long short uh, strategy that's focusing just longing or short the S&P itself, the S&P 500 itself. Uh, uh, we have a long only strategy. Uh, some institutional clients are really interested in this specific strategy because they can actually they provide it to their own clients. And uh, we have, which I think the most interesting strategy is the long, short sectors and industry strategy, which are is based on the level one, level two that I just uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, so I'm going to start actually with the level one, level two. Uh, this one is actually focusing on one sector. Once a month, 
the algorithm picks the best sector to hold for this specific month uh, uh, out of those 11 uh, sectors that we saw earlier. Uh, this actually strategy made 244, 254, 254% uh, from 2020, uh, while the S&P did 33%. Um, we can find the, the return of each and every year uh, here in the, in the table that you see on the bottom. But I think that the most interesting thing is to see which sectors the algorithm chosen uh, of each and every month. Uh, by the way, if you can see a red arrow, that means that we shorted that specific sector. We go long or short uh, every every month. So we started with the long on the financial, go short on the real estate, and then we made that gap from the S&P 500, uh, continuing on the, the XLK, XLF, as we can see here. Uh, by the way, the blue line is our strategy. The orange line is the S&P 500 uh, performance. We can see at each and every year uh, what the algorithm choose to, to focus on for entire month. It's a, a really high man, a low maintenance, maintenance uh, strategy, just buying the best sector or shorting it for one month. And it made some remarkable uh, returns. It's really popular among our institutional clients. Uh, we, can, we can find 2022. Uh, and also can find 2023 while we were shorting the financial market. As your own said, uh, show, showed you the forecast uh, uh, that uh, shorting the uh, banks, uh, this specific sector was uh, supposed to be shorted uh, on the on March 2023, and this is how we got this gap from the S&P itself. Uh, we're continuing on XLK, the industrial uh, and financial and being in different sector in each and every uh, month. Um, this is from last month, actually. Uh, the algorithm focused on the industrial XLI was the best one too long. And we beat it the mar almost double the return of the market uh, in February in the last rebalance. This is the a live portfolio. Another interesting strategy uh, is uh, the industries one, that the one that's not is focusing on the level one, is focusing on the level two. We are choosing the best sector and actually uh, uh, picking the best uh, industry to be in. So we're just not, not just generally holding uh, the technology sector. We can be in the semiconductor sector, for example. And this is the return that this specific strategy made on these three years, uh, almost uh, 500%, which is uh, pretty high and pretty impressive uh, for just holding Three specific uh, industries each and every uh, month. Again, monthly rebalancing uh, in each month. The algorithm tells us if we go long or short on those three uh, on three uh, industries. Uh, for example, in 2020, we were shorted the retail, uh, we shorted the real estate and the communication. Uh, for example, here and that gives us this specific gap. Uh, another interesting example is the longing on uh, those uh, in October uh, 2020 as well. Uh, 2021, which was long only, like a long uh, a position a year, we can find longing on the banking, the home builders, the, the energy. You have a, a diverse industry that the algorithm chooses each and every time to be in. And in 2022 as well. And 2023, again, as we saw the XLF, uh, in the level one, we can find in which industries in the XLF actually the, the algorithm decided to short. We can see the banks and the insurance company here that gave us this big uh, return uh, over the S&P uh, going down direction. And uh, this is a live, for, live portfolio from actually uh, the last rebalancing uh, in the, the algorithm chooses, uh, chooses actually three uh, industries, XHB, XH, uh, XHE, and KCE. And we can see the returns that the algorithm actually performed uh, in this uh, one month from February to March. Uh, we can see the dates here. We can see the return of the portfolio compared to the S&P, more than double the S&P just by picking three uh, industries. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. We can see also uh, another interesting thing that that the algorithm gives the best weights for his best sectors. For example, he, he decided here to give more weight uh, to the HexHB, to the home builders. And we can see the performance of the home builders in that month was 8.48, uh, which gave us 
uh, this uh, significantly higher return over the S&P. Um, another strategy that uh, we are uh, actually kind of proud of, as uh, your own uh, uh, said uh, earlier, we are doing uh, some big collaboration with uh, uh, Meita, which is a big investment house, uh, the, one of the biggest actually investment house in uh, Israel. After two long years of uh, a lot of uh, auditions and trying uh, to to get to the right uh, uh, mixture of stocks and the right uh, uh, proportion of uh, holding sectors and stocks together, uh, we we'll, we found this specific strategy. We built this specific strategy to their needs, and uh, right now we are collaborating with them. Um, in a really interesting uh, strategy as well. Yeah, um, and just just to add, we have yeah we have launched together the first AI powered fund here in Israel. We are we are really proud of it, and uh, yes, it was very exciting journey. Yes, indeed. Um, and we can see for this example this this specific strategy choose forty stock out of the S and P five hundred. Uh, and how we we actually performed in last uh, February up until the, the March, you can see eight uh, percent uh, comparing to three point three of the S and P five hundred. And then this by choosing stocks from the S and P five hundred. Again, we're not uh, taking stocks from other universe, such as Nasdaq or other indices. We're just focusing on the S and P five hundred and succeed including beating uh, or not performing outperforming him uh, uh, significantly as we can see here another strategy uh, the last strategy is the taking profit strategy uh, this specific edge fund uh, edge fund wanted to focus on beating the market and that was the only target of this specific uh, uh, strategy uh, in uh, here we when the the return of the algorithm uh, of the portfolio is actually uh, over one percent, over the like outperforming the market by one percent, we are selling the the portfolio, we locking the gain, uh, the profit, and holding it up until the end of the month by buying uh, the S and P index, and by that uh, outperforming the market uh, up until the end of the month. We can find uh, when you see this one figure, it means that we outperform the market and take the profit. Uh, in this specific strategy, uh, actually forty two out of the 52 but rebalancing uh, we succeeded to outperform the market which is quite a great uh, 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 fact here um, this strategy also made the uh, nice returns we can see the days that we actually took the profit and 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 locked the strategy up until the rest of the month uh, in february it's actually happened two days after opening the position uh, in february 7th so if uh, some of you are interested in uh, institutional clients uh, that are in this webinar, please uh, feel free to uh, approach us by the website or by my mail and, and let us find you some interesting strategies or solutions uh, to your needs. And we'll be happy to do so. And then, um, of course, besides stocks and uh, ETF, as we just saw, uh, we have some other uh, kind of packages. Uh, for your crypto lovers uh, in the audience, we have the, the crypto package, uh, which have more than uh, 75 uh, 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 cryptocurrencies that you can find. Um, again, in the same shape, we can find uh, different time frames for so one month, three months, three days, seven days, 14 days. And the currencies that the crypto that is right now is kind of bubbling. And uh, we saw the performance of the Bitcoin in the last two months. It's a, it's an interesting universe to be in. So you can find packages for the cryptos uh, as well. Uh, you can find the major here as the Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and other uh, uh, currencies, cryptocurrencies uh, that you know. Um, and other kind of packages is uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the popular popular one uh, lately, uh, the ESG. Uh, Yaron, you want to talk about this specific package? Yeah, there are a lot of uh, institutional clients, banks, family offices, as well as hedge funds that are targeting right now the ESG investment universe. And this is another interesting use case. We have trained our predictive algorithm based on this 
uh, investment universe, the top 100 most sustainable um, and responsible companies. And every day the algorithm is identifying opportunities from this investment uh, universe. And this is another optional, if you believe in the future of the ESG investment, um, it's a great option and it's available as well in our website. Even if you have another investment universe that is relevant for you, we can train our predictive algorithm based on your investment universe or even based on your portfolio. And you can receive daily prediction based on a customized daily prediction based on the investment universe that is relevant to you, basically. Uh, all right. Yep. So besides those specific uh, packages, we also have the word indices, the one that I told you that uh, you can mix and uh, with uh, some stock package and know the right sectors and indices to be in. Uh, we also have the e fixed income uh, package, uh, commodities uh, packages, uh, currencies package. Um, and and, and other, the algorithm is actually providing forecasts for different regions around the globe. As you can find here, the Canadian stock exchange, European stock exchange, which looks uh, uh, pretty uh, interesting right now. We're going to talk about it uh, uh, in a few minutes. Um, um, again, the UK, Japan, South Africa, Ita Italy, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Australia, and basically uh, all the big uh, exchanges, stock exchanges around the globe. We have a forecast that you can find. And of course, the Indian market, which is really popular. Uh, by this, uh, by the algorithm, uh, we have a lot of uh, Indian uh, clients. Also, by a big collaboration that we made uh, with uh, 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 Shunya and Finvasia, uh, is a lot of uh, not a lot. There's one uh, more than one hundred thousand uh, uh, Indian investors are using the artificial intelligence, the algorithm that we have here to find Indian stock, specific Indian stock in the Indian market. As we can as we can see here, uh, it's actually get connected into their mobile phone, and they finding uh, the best stocks uh, by signal and predictability, as uh, we can see here. Um, all right, so we talked about the past, and I think uh, it's time to talk about what we have in the last webinar, uh, because we're gonna talk about the, the future in a, in a few moments. Um, last webinar, we showed you the level one and the level two, the best sector that the algorithm is actually, actually suggesting to be in uh, in the next month. Uh, and we, you can find their XLI, XLC, the communication, the industrial, uh, the technology. And in the level two, we can find the retail and the uh, uh, home builders and uh, the semiconductors. And we can find the, actually the return to the right and see the performance of those uh, specific uh, sectors. Um, and we can uh, also talk about the, the, the indices forecast that we have. Um, we told you to focus uh, on the European stocks uh, and European stock exchange that, you, that we saw here. We saw the DAX, we saw the Eurostox 50. We saw that the, the NASDAQ and uh, the Russell will be good uh, places to be in in the, in the uh, US indices. We saw a decrease in the volatility and uh, you can find the results uh, to the right. And let's talk what about going to happen uh, in, the, in April actually, in the next month. And what the, what the algorithm actually sees uh, further ahead, uh, we can find it in the level one I, I, I'll tell you again, the level one is the best 11 sectors, big 11 sectors that we have in the S&P 500. Uh, we can see the energy sector is leading this specific universe uh, and the industrial, again, XLI is still here. Uh, keep notice to the, to the to energy sector has some uh, low predictability. So we have to take that in account, but we can find the industrial looking pretty strong and the communication sector being pretty strong for the next uh, month. And if we're looking on the level two, we can find the insurance company, KIH, and uh, we can find energy again. Uh, metals and mining, XME, looks pretty strong. And the home builders is keeping uh, on being strong and in the uh, upper side of the table uh, as uh, the leading uh, one of the leading sectors. 
you can find the retail is and the regional banks in the US are not that positive uh, and in the bottom of this specific forecast. So this is the by look. The, yeah, by, by the way, if um, this is very interesting and very, uh, uh, it's great that you are sharing that. Uh, regarding the indices prediction that you just shared from last month, um, I think it's amazing to see how the algorithm identified Europe as a very interesting place to be. You know, uh, remember, we are talking about the beginning of March, and it was great to see that the algorithm was able to identify the opportunity uh, that exists in Europe. Um, it's great to see uh, the, the positive prediction, you know, for the market. The market went up during this month. You know, it goes without saying, but this is also something that's very important to any investor to get insight where the market is adding to. Um, and, uh, and also regarding the assets to avoid, um, the fact that we should basically... Uh, in a risk on market, the volatility is decreasing. Um, as we can see here, the negative focus for the VIX. So in general, it's, it's, it was very successful uh, prediction in my opinion. Yes, indeed. And let's talk about what we are seeing for the next month. All right, so this is the forecast. This is the indices forecast for April for the next month. Uh, again, the cells that you can see in yellow, it's something that I uh, marked just for our convenience to focus on, but we can find, uh, again, uh, energy. You can see XOI and OS6 uh, energy sectors uh, indices are in the top of this forecast. And uh, we can find the Taiwan uh, after actually a, a big earthquake that I just experienced, but uh, Taiwan looks still uh, pretty okay. Uh, we can find the European banks, European banks, banks, sorry, SX70 uh, is the European banks, large European banks, looks pretty good. We can find the Italian market here. Uh, we can find, again, a lot of Europe uh, indicators. The DAX also uh, is pretty strong. Uh, Hong Kong, uh, after being in the, in the bottom of the forecast for a long uh, time now, is, uh, is uh, again, in the upper side of the table. Uh, Eurostock 50, as we saw again in last month, we can still find it in the upper side of the table. Banks in, in the U.S., also big banks in the U.S., uh, looks good. Not regional banks, by the way. You can see the regional banks are in the right side. The KRX is quite negative, but big banks in the U.S. looks uh, good. We also have uh, the VIX. Uh, uh, the volatility is... Uh, uh, Actually, in the middle of the table, we, so we are uh, supposed to experience some volatility uh, in the next uh, month, but it's still in the uh, uh, middle part of the table and not that strong. Uh, we basically saw it more on the on the shorter time frame, those volatility. And if uh, we can find the Russell 1000 here as well as one of the leading uh, indices uh, uh, from the US market. Uh, we can find an, a positive S and P 500 as well for this month. Um, uh, by by the way, the signal is not that strong, but it's still positive that we can find a, a positive market for the S and P uh, 500. In the red part of the table, we can find the real estate again. Uh, in the bottom, uh, the Nasdaq 100, uh, the Dow Jones, uh, which we saw also in the shorter time frame, also quite negative right now, and the regional banks as we all, uh, uh, as, I, as I said the earlier, uh, looking quite uh, negative. But, uh, yeah, one important remark before we continue, this is based on today's prediction. Every day, this prediction is being updated based on the most updated uh, uh, developments in the market. So it's very important to verify before, before entering to any position, we do suggest to monitor the daily prediction and to verify it uh, to make sure that you're entering to the right asset and that the prediction is still relevant. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and if we're checking the magnificent seven, 
uh, forecast for the next month, uh, we can find uh, that uh, Google is leading this specific forecast, looking pretty strong. Apple is still in red, as we can find here, uh, after struggling in the US and in, in Europe. Um, uh, the, the right now, the algorithm gives us gives it uh, still a red uh, uh, forecast for the next month. Uh, so this is uh, the forecast of the Magnificent uh, Seven. In this case, we have another one, eight for you guys. And for all of the webinar uh, crowd that is still here with us, um, we are suggesting two interesting sales uh, that I think that you, you can use really uh, uh, usefully to get the really good uh, uh, investment opportunities in the market. One of them is uh, buying, getting two packages, one plus one, uh, just by paying 299 per month, and you can choose uh, two packages for the entire uh, for the entire month. And we can combine like the ETF package that we talked about or the indices package with the S and P 500 package, and then uh, uh, doing a, a a pretty useful a choose choices of stocks that you you want to focus on if you want to if you focus on the technology sector choose the technology stocks uh, as i explained earlier uh, this is one of our uh, greatest uh, sales one plus one in uh, 299 uh, you just press on the link that your own sent you in the chat and uh, you can get this uh, specific package uh, the second sale is a six month subscription and in this sale, uh, you get two packages uh, as you get early, as, as in the first sale, and uh, for two uh, two hundred sixty nine dollars uh, per month, and you get the big eight or the magnificent magnificent seven uh, with the major U.S. indices for free. That means you get three packages in this price. Uh, it's a six month uh, subscription but you get three packages you can choose any two of packages that you want and you get the the magnificent magnificent seven uh, for free uh, without the uh, any charges i think this is a uh, quite amazing sale uh, so uh, use it wisely those two again i repeat those two sales uh, one plus one for 299 you get two packages in 299 and and the another sale is the six month subscription in 269 per month, you're choosing two packages and getting the Magnificent 7 for free with the US indices uh, in it. And it's all our, all these sales are by tomorrow uh, at 12 a.m., if I'm, I'm correct. Yes. For 24 hours, um, uh, this, uh, this sale is available for you only for the uh, webinar participants. So, yeah, so ba basically, just to connect you with, with the webinar, you can use the, these special deals in order to create the sector rotation strategy that you have seen today. You can choose the ETF package or the indices package as a package that will point to the right, to the top sector or the top region. And, and you can utilize the stocks uh, packages in order to identify, um, you know, and to drill down into the leading sectors. You can change those uh, packages every month. So there is no commitment at all. Every month you can change your two packages. And uh, with, the, with the second deal that Ben just shared, you're receiving also the magnificent uh, seven we had we had netflix to the magnificent seven so it's magnificent magnificent eight and to make it even more amazing we are adding the daily prediction of the main u.s indices the s p 500 the dow jones the nasdaq the russell um, and it's a very very powerful um tool to navigate the market by the way there are some edge funds that focusing on those magnificent seven magnificent eight for their daily trading they're just changing their weight uh, among those top uh, top uh, stocks. Yeah, sorry, Ben. I, uh... Uh, so we, we usually get this question at the end of the webinar. What do we suggest? Uh, what packages do you suggest us to, to start with? And 
So uh, my pick, uh, is, as I mentioned earlier, is to combine the ETF package and the S&P S&P 500 package. Uh, choose, choosing the ETF package, we'll know in which sector we should focus on. Uh, as I said, for example, energy sector for this month or technology sector. And then I would focus on the S&P 500 package on those specific stocks from uh, this uh, specific universe, uh, energy stocks or technology stocks, uh, for example. So I think combining ETF package or the indices package uh, with the S&P 500 uh, would be a winning combination. And Yaron, pick something yes. else. Okay. Um, I like the top 10 stock picks. This is basically the same package that we saw today in the webinar when we saw Micron Technology, MU, MSTR. We shared some live prediction from that. So it could be a very good choice. Uh, I like the fact that this pre package includes daily S&P 500 package. I, add to, I have to say this package is a little bit more, the risk level in this package is a little bit more, is higher than the other packages because uh, we are tracking not only S&P 500 for this universe, for this package, but also the NASDAQ and also the Dow Jones. So make sure that you are okay with this risk level, but also, I would like to add to this one uh, the Russell 1000, um, the Russell 1000 uh, package. Um, also, I think that energy, Ben, what do you think about the energy in the coming months? Yeah, the energy looks uh, quite strong, as we saw also in the indices forecast and also in the uh, level one, level two. Uh, but the energy, as well as the sector, can be more volatile than the others, so we have to uh, keep that in mind. And of course, after taking these sales, you can uh, 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 switch your, uh, change your uh, packages uh, once a month uh, to the, you know, the best uh, package for this specific month. And so you can also use that uh, in this specific uh, sale. And yeah, the, the energy Europe looks quite good right now. As we saw, Home Builders looks also quite strong. Uh, in the long, uh, longer time frame, um, uh, semiconductors might be a little bit volatile right now, but also in the future, in the longer time frame, we can see it pretty strong. Uh, so maybe picking up stocks that uh, have a good price from the semiconductors uh, universe. And we have some interesting stuff in the market right now, as we saw earlier. Yes. A lot of yes. uh, opportunities that you can use. And uh, uh, again, those two sales, webinar sales that are available for the next 24 hours are, uh, I think are, uh, can uh, answer your needs. Okay, let's start answering uh, some questions. Let's take some questions from the crowd. Yala. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Jose is raising his hand. Uh, guys, please use the chat. Please, please use the chat for the, for the question. We will, um, so uh, there is an existing client that would that asking if he can join to the six month package instead of his existing package. Uh, yeah, Ben, do you want to answer it or should I answer it? You can answer it. Okay, no problem at all. Of course, just uh, send, uh, just use the link that that we have shared in the in the Q and A in the chat window. And and uh, shoot us an email after that, and we will make all the adjustment and the arrangement in order to convert you from from your existing package to this package. And it's great to see that you are uh, happy with the service. Um, uh, someone is asking, what do you think about the combination of the indices and the stock package? Because we didn't see it in your uh, in your pick, so he's asking. Winning combination. Winning combination. Okay, the index, the indices package, the word indices package, and the stock packages are actually a very good combination. Same goes with the ETFs and any stock package. And don't worry about that. You will be able to make the adjustment after joining. You can always change uh, the second package until you will find a package that is uh, that you feeling comfortable with the with the sector and the, and, the, and the risk level, of course. 
uh, you are receiving a lot of compliments. Uh, uh, so uh, congratulations. Ben, um, there is a client that focusing on the short term. Um, do you still recommending to utilize the long-term predictions uh, when he is picking the short-term picks? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have to combine all the time frames. Even if I'm trading for a shorter time frame, like for one week or two weeks, uh, check the longer time frames for the stocks and then go down or go back to the shorter time frame, see if these stocks are also in the longer time frame as well. Because as more time frames the the, the stock stocks appears, uh, the better it is for you to choose it. So uh, keep your focusing on uh, multiple time frames on a high signal and high predictability level, and that will increase your success rate. Right, and there is a client that focusing actually on the long time frame. Uh, do do um, um, does he need to follow the market on a daily or weekly basis to check any change? Yeah, you don't have to week on a day check it on a daily basis. You can also check it like for once a week or once or two or three weeks to see just that your all the stocks are still in the long position and, uh, and even not one of the stocks may actually uh, move to the red part of the table. So checking the, you don't have to be uh, on on it on a daily basis. You can uh, actually check it once or uh, once a week or once or two weeks, uh, or even once a month, and choose the best stocks uh, from the one month or three month uh, uh, time frames uh, is also uh, okay. Okay. Um, there is a specific question about specific ETFs. Uh, please send us an email, and we will send you. The full ETF universe, we can create also a custom prediction for your own ETF universe. So, so please send us an email. Um, there is a question about Bitcoin miners. Uh, we do have dedicated packages that focusing on Bitcoin miners. Please send us an email as well, and we will send you the uh, more information about that. You can also use this link, this one plus one link, and we will make sure that you will see, you will receive the Bitcoin miners uh, package. Uh, okay. Uh, additional question. Um, what is more important, the predictability or the signal? Or should we can, we combine both of them? Um, I suggest uh, to give more weight to the predictability indicator. But they both, of course, are uh, important, and we have to uh, focus on both of them. Uh, but uh, try to focus on the assets that have the highest predictability level, and then uh, filtering the one with the biggest signal, high signal. Okay. Do the AI system provide commodity forecast? Yes, we do offer commodities forecast daily pre daily prediction for. More than 80 different commodities, of course, gold, silver, oil, uh, zinc, you name it, gas, natural gas, basically every commodities that are there. You can use this deal also uh, to you to um, actually to get the commodities uh, package and also the currency package. So basically any package that is available in our website is available in this deal to answer your second question. Um, okay. Um, take profit and stop loss, Ben. They're really recommendable. Um, yeah, but this is how you have to manage your risk. I mean, you have different uh, risk levels uh, for each and every one of you. So uh, I always suggest managing the risk. And, and put some uh, stop loss uh, uh, percentage to your investment uh, portfolio or to the specific, specific stocks and also by the take uh, profit. Again, it depends also by the volatility of the package. Uh, uh, some package, for example, asks about the option package. Uh, the option package has high volatility and uh, there is more risk involved in this specific package. Uh, this this specific package is actually focusing on stocks that have a high movement of high volume of of options on them. So uh, 
uh, again, it depends on the package itself, uh, but always manage your risk. It's one of the most important thing in investments. Yes, um, more questions about the packages. Uh, I would like to, to trade stocks specifically for the short term, for seven days period. Which package do you recommend for this time frame? And yeah, you have the, you yeah. have the short time frames in each and every package. I mean, every package have six time frames from three days, seven days, 14 days, one month, three months, and one year. You can focus on, on the time frame that you like that is actually fitting fits for you. So uh, uh, if you are trading for uh, shorter time frames or longer time frames, you can find it uh, in the in each and every package. Okay. Uh, after buying a share, do I have do I do I have to wait for a sell signal, or what will be the best time to sell? Uh, how to take profit basically yeah uh, usually you should, you should uh, wait for the time frame that you bought the stocks from if you bought it for one month so uh, wait for them one month and um, again uh, focusing on higher or longer time frame will increase your success rates so uh, try to do so okay um is it possible to receive the data as a CSV file? Yes. Uh, it's possible to receive it as a flat file, as a CSV file. Please contact us after subscribing. Uh, if you managing institutional account, we can support that as well. Uh, what is the option options package? Yeah, I, I answered that. Yeah. Ah, you answered that. Okay, sorry. I mean, um, is this system is more relevant to institutions or individuals? Um, uh, what is your uh, opinion? The, as, as we just saw, it's actually fits uh, for institutional and, and individuals. Uh, both of them can use the, the algorithm in different, in different ways. Uh, we saw institutional clients uh, using it more for uh, uh, have a general look on the market or building uh, specific strategies uh, for them. Uh, individual clients can use the forecast, uh, the same forecast, by the way, that the institutional forecast, get, the institutional clients almost gets and, and use it uh, in a more uh, 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 specific way in like picking stocks or picking the right sectors or combining the two. So uh, individual and uh, institutional clients can enjoy the algorithm in the same ways. Okay, so uh, someone is asking uh, if you can explain why you chose the two packages that you have chose as part of this uh, one plus one deal. So go back to this uh, slide. Here. Talking about this? You mean? I'm talking this? about, no, he's asking about the six month subscription. Yeah. Uh, why, why, why you chose uh, the packages that you have chose there? Um, the ETF and the S and P five hundred. Yeah, exactly. So again, being in the right sector is is the, the right thing to do in the investment uh, uh, universe. First of all, being in the right sector, being where you should be, and the further ahead, you can actually drill down into this sector and choose the best stocks from this sector. So this uh, combination is actually giving us the the universe or the sector that you should focus on and giving us the best stock from this sector uh, to be in so i think that's the that's a, that's a winning combination okay thank you ben ben you did it again there is a lot of uh, positive feedback in the chat oops you did it again oops I didn't uh, yeah, yeah people are asking why it's not possible to have a webinar every week so i guess it was a positive experience yeah uh, this helps. time uh, so thank you very much for a great webinar thank you Yaron. and uh, thank you for the large audience and for the good feedback and um, feel free to contact us with any questions and uh, and utilize yeah. those uh, interesting deals yeah sorry Ben. yeah and uh, we'll see you in the next month
We will see you next month. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Have a good success. Day. Yes. Thank you very much. Bye bye.